Good morning. It is a little after 5.30. We're looking at 16 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 23 degrees in here. Pretty chilly. Just turned the buddy heater on to take the chill off. and I got the coffee going over there. Really nice night of sleep. It was kind of sleet and rain, freezing rain for the first hour or so. And then I just kind of fell asleep. I got pretty far into my book. Kind of like a wet air today. Cold, wet air. It was pretty cold getting out of that sleeping bag, to be honest with you. So coffee's on. Gonna cook up a nice breakfast. Drive that into me. Drive that coffee right into me too. And then haven't really made a plan for today yet. So I still got a lot to do around camp to get it ready before the fellas show up where the special guest shows up. Brandon and the boys, hopefully Brandon's crew rolled in last night. He's got a big crew coming in and I think they're gonna try to fish across the lake. So they're gonna drill their way across, make sure it's safe. We think it's safe, but we're not entirely sure. And so we might be looking at some white fish and lake trout. I was gonna leave this area alone for a day or two till my buddies got here. So that way I didn't whale on some of their fish. I don't think I'm gonna fish today. I think I'm actually gonna go for a snowmobile ride and explore some of the wilderness up here that I've never been to on a snowmobile. I, I kinda would like to get to the area where I first started trapping years ago. I gotta go, uh, first I'd have to go east, south, hard west, and then west again after I cross the, the major road and see if I can get down Trapper Joe Road and Camp Carnage Road and, explore a little of that territory, see if I can see maybe a couple moose or see what the wildlife's doing and see some tracks. Should be all fresh tracks since uh, early this morning when the snow stopped, but should be should be a fun day. Kind of itching to get the snowmobile out on some virgin snow and, and uh, go do some solo exploring on some old logging roads. So I'm thinking about getting west of the Telos Road. Yeah? Yeah. And I used to trap over 15 miles over that way. Yeah. So I'm thinking about taking a ride out in that country. I'd like to. I want to ride today. I'm only going to fish for a while. Yeah. I'm going to run back and just top her off on fuel just to make sure because I might yeah. do something dumb today. I might end up down no knocking on a snowmobile. Who knows? But I figured I'd take a ride. I what? think the ice is better here than over there. Is it? What do you got here? I bet you're close to 10 inches. <laughs> a little better than yesterday? Oh, it felt like we were drilling for a week after yesterday. What a beautiful day, though. Oh, and you trap the whole thing you got to <laughs> You got the old cat power out. I'll tell you, no, she's a gem. I don't care what these guys say, <laughs> she's a gem. I heard she got a little scared of the slush. Yeah, she yeah. don't like that at all. No, if she, I don't know how you did it. If I, she pops it all on you, like, I don't know if it's got air leak somewhere. Every once in a while, a little boo. Yeah, just, just feather it. Yeah, feather, give her the gas. Yep. Yeah. She's Beautiful. a gem. I appreciate you letting me use it. Oh, no problem. My, my trip, like I told these guys, I'm glad you guys let me tag along because yep. my trip would have been done, done. I'd have been going home. Yep.
All right, 33 miles from where I'm camping. And this is the spot right here. I wasn't sure if I could make it here due to roads growing in and trails and stuff like that. But this spot right here is pretty hollowed ground to me. This was the original Camp Carnage. And on the map, this is Camp Carnage Road. And I had a camper set up there as the first camper I ever owned. And I tore it apart, made it into a trapping shack. And I used to come up here and spend three straight months, October, November, December, right here, trapping and hunting every day. And didn't really bring much up for food, brought several shotgun shells and a couple boxes of bullets and ate partridge and rabbit every day and ran one heck of a trap line as I was learning. And I had a big game pole right over here where I would do a lot of skinning. And I had over here, I'd save every carcass from the partridge I caught so I could set them out for Martin and Fisher. And over there, I had like a pile of raccoon, <laughs> dead raccoon uh, uh, bodies, carcasses. And I had a bunch of fox and coyote and fisher and stuff hanging here off the game pole that had frozen up. And the story goes that two game wardens pulled in to check, check on me because they'd heard that there was a trapper in the area and they, they wanted to see what was up, make sure I was on the up and up. And they pull in right here and all they see is just dead bodies everywhere and piles of dead bodies there, a bunch of rabbit dead over there, pile this high of partridge carcasses. And the one warden looked over to the other one and said, look at the carnage. So ever since that has been named Camp Carnage, this spot was Camp Carnage and the road's Camp Carnage Road. It's like a mile and a half, two miles long, coming in off another logging road. We're 60 to 100 miles from Millinocket. It's from the nearest town in the wilderness. And one of those wardens I became really good friends with and he taught me a ton about trapping years later. And we stayed together up near Clayton Lake and ran a real decent trap line up that way. But I figured I'd stop here and do a little reminiscing, share a little of those stories with you guys. I actually caught a Martin right there in one of those trees, a pine Martin, which they call a sable. It had come into camp to rob some of those carcasses. Once that smell permeated out out of here of death, they, they seemed to find it. And he would rob me of uh, partridge carcasses every day till I, I ended up getting him in like a number one victor. Uh, long spring in a in a tree but pretty awesome spot I wouldn't sell those memories for a million dollars it was some of the best times I've ever had scary you know I had a truck that I think I had a five hundred dollar truck the second year I was here the first year I had I had a truck that was two-wheel drive that uh, that scared a lot of people that knew I was up here and then the second year I had that I was in this spot. I had a four wheel drive, but it was a $500 truck, standard transmission. And I remember I'd have to pop the hood every day and clean the mice off the, the cowling. The mice would make a nest on the, on the warm truck every single day after I'd park it. But I made it out. <laughs> I had one year, uh, they called for like, I think six inches of snow here. And I woke up at like two in the morning and it was, it was snowing golf ball sized snowflakes. And I said, this is going to be a big storm. So I picked up everything I had in camp, tore down the game pole and, you know, took an hour and a half or so to get ready, get everything ready to, to boogie on out of here. And I started towing my camper out. By the time I started towing, I had that two wheel drive, I had chains on it and weight in the back of it. And I was pushing snow with the front bumper and it was getting up in my radiator. I had to be careful not to overheat. I had to get out and clean it a couple times. And I'd made it about probably eight miles to the, to what's called the T-Loss Road, which is a main vein for log trucks that they were going to plow eventually. I knew they were. And this was like, I think, handy to Christmas, might've been after Christmas. So around the time I was going to leave anyway. So I parked the camper there for just left it hooked up and slept in that and read books. Couldn't, couldn't move around because the snowstorm ended up being close to four foot. And through some game of telephone, 
my dad had called the warden just to say, hey, I know they got dumped on up there, just checking to see if, if you heard anything from them. You know, he was worried. Well, that warden was on vacation, so it went to another warden that didn't know where I was, and then that got passed to another warden, and all of a sudden there was a lost trapper up there that hadn't checked in, missed a check-in, which I didn't have any check-ins. And, and all of a sudden they sent the airplanes after me. I was in my camper reading a book, and this plane kept buzzing me. <laughs> And buzzing, buzzing. Finally, I went outside, waved my arms, like, what the heck's going on? And then two or three game wardens showed up in snowmobiles and said, hey, you missed your checkpoint. You the trapper that missed your, your check-in time. And I said, well, I don't have any check-in times. So they're like, you trapper Joe? I said, yeah. They said, well, someone's worried about you. So I said, well, I'll be out of here in a couple of days. So they opened the road up finally, and, and I was able to haul the camper down and get down to, down to town and check in. That was always funny that they sent the helicopters and, and airplanes, but it turned up just being a mix up on too many people that, in the communication games, like that game of telephone that they used to play or whatever it was called, where one person told somebody a secret, they were sitting in a circle, and then that secret got told to somebody else. And by the time it got back to the original, it was a completely different story. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here reminisce and remember some great old times and drive a real nice hot cup of coffee into me and then I got a couple other spots I want to check in this territory where I used to trap just see what it looks like and and uh get close to some real good memories sled's running awesome it's uh it's really good going right now we have probably Probably two foot of snow. It's packed pretty good, so it's not too bad a fluff. Sometimes you hit some fluffy spots. But these wide skis I put on, the skins, really make a difference about keeping me up floated. And it's like having a set of training wheels for someone who's not very uh, experienced like myself. So it makes the going a lot easier. And it's just really nice riding right now. You can go as fast as you want on these log roads. You know, I used to. You know, in a truck, you can't even go as fast as you can go in a snowmobile. Oh, that's hot. Decent amount of game signs so far. I found uh, two pods of moose where they're, they're herded up. And it's the same exact spots I've seen them for 20 years. So it's pretty cool to see that. There's not as many moose as there used to be, but they're still in the same areas. I saw one fresh coyote track and one fresh marten track and that's been about it so not a lot of game moving around overnight or in the area anymore they cut so hard nowadays it's really terrible how they they cut they cut a lot of the habitat that's needed like the spruce and pine and hemlock you know a lot of that softwood makes for really good winter in areas for these animals and provides a lot of home for squirrels and then the squirrels get fed on by the martin and fisher and deer will deer used to winter here too but they're they're not around anymore
otter. There's some moose tracks and I think those are the first ever bobcat tracks I've ever seen in this region. There were bobcat here before I trapped. Oh, when I trapped it was 20 years ago, but there were no bobcat in the area. The lynx had kind of taken over and the coyote had really put a hurting on the bobcat population. Fisher did too. But before that, I know some of the Osbournes had trapped some some bobcat before that. I think Uncle Kevin got one and I think Mark had seen one or two. But that's pretty cool to see. A, that's a really fresh bobcat track. We might see him today. But pretty cool seeing that otter. The, the very first time I ever crossed this bridge when I was just young pop. There were two moose standing right in that waterfall right there. Right in that waterfall. And they were feeding on grass, putting their heads underwater and ripping grass up off the bottom. And it was just the prettiest thing I've ever seen. And I said, yeah, I definitely want to be in this area. And I remember I, I would cross this bridge every single day on my trap line. I had, I had a pretty good trap line back then when I started. There's that otter again on top of the ice. And I remember it got really cold. This had pretty well frozen over. There was one air hole, like a little bit left of where that otter is now. And I remember stopping on the bridge, looking over and an otter had popped out of that air hole and was like playing on top of the ice, rolling around just like this one is and sliding. And there were bigger trees back then. They, they hadn't cut yet. 
there were big pines on each side and there was an eagle would swoop down and try to get that otter and that otter would let him get within about 10 feet and he'd slide like crazy into his hole and go right back down and the eagle would perch on the other side and watch him for a couple minutes and get the urge and he'd go right back after him and that otter would sneak back into his hole and it got it was so funny because the otter would go a little bit further and further every time knowing how far it could get away before that eagle, eagle could get to him and it tempted that eagle and i sat here and watched for probably an hour those two go at it and that eagle never got that otter and i think that otter had more fun messing with that eagle than than any anything else it could have been doing that day but otter really cool animal it's one of my favorite super super incredible fur super super cool animal they one of the few wild animals that takes time to play every day they run around slide on their belly just like a kid but this one's fishing pretty good down here there's chubs and and brook trout suckers and and perch in this stream and down in that hole and i think i saw him come up and eat a fish already but i've been sitting here oh a good half hour watching him there he comes up again but it looks like more than likely the otter caught a fish or a mink or something over here and ate it right there there's a big blood pile down on the ice right on the edge where an otter might have caught a fish and pulled it up on top of that skim ice and eaten it and blood everywhere pretty cool to see a blood patch out in the middle of the woods let's see what else we have some more footprints down there i can't quite tell from here more than likely mink oh there's that otter again let's continue on Well, this used to be a road, but I guess it's not anymore. It looks like an ice storm kind of covered it up with all these alders, so 
I'm gonna yard her back around. I can, there's a back way to where I want to get going anyway. It's just a little bit longer route, but with having to cut through every 50 yards, the other way will be a lot quicker, a little bit easier. All right, it's about uh, 75 miles in. Pretty good wilderness so far. Getting around pretty good. Got, but got a pretty good clunker right there. Can't get around it. It's a big one. I gotta decide. Uh, it looks like another big one down up ahead too. I gotta decide if I wanna go this way or not. This another, probably two miles of this to till the spot I wanna get to up on top of a hill and at an old tree. But before I get tackle this tree, I'm gonna eat some lunch, drive something into me so I get a little bit more energy. We're past noon now. But got a can of soup up there. Let's see if it's been staying warm. Spoon. You don't even have to use a can opener anymore with these things. Well, that's a Campbell's Chunky Sir Lion Burger. So I'm guessing that's lion meat. Lion meat's good for you. Put hair on your chest. Sled's running awesome. This is the most unbelievable sled I've ever seen. Those ski skins are really impressive. It's like a set of training wheels for me. That's good soup. This tree's good size. Looks like a fir tree. Gonna have to cut it twice to get through because it spans so far across the road. I can't lift the top of it. All right, let's go. All right, got it limbed a little bit and got through the first section. Tough chopping, it's frozen sap wood, so it's it's really hard. It's not soft wood anymore, but I'm gonna cut through. I got three right here. I know I gotta get cut through to continue on. If there's much more of this, we'll probably turn around.
Go on.
I wonder if the boys are having this much fun. That's fun. I got one more small one. I know I got to cut up ahead. I'm going to see if I can feather this snowmobile through right now. No problem. All right, it looks semi-clear for a while after this one, so I'll take care of this one and then motor up. Looks like it could be a disaster up there. I can't tell if I can get under it or not, but there's four big ones laying horizontal. That bigger one was pretty tough because the sap was frozen inside the wood, dead frozen. Can be tough to chop. It doesn't, it doesn't come apart too easy. Uh, that one's the Branton Cochran. It's pretty close to three pounds. Uh, could use a little bit heavier, but it's, it's fine for a lot of the smaller stuff. I think it's two and a half or two and three quarters, but that's the Allagash Cruiser. Worked pretty good. Unreal. Really? Best I've ever had. Oh, man. 110 miles. Where'd you end up? Uh, Chizunkuk. Yep. 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 I went to like four or five of my old trapping spots. Yep. Checked it out. Cool. Couldn't get down some roads, a lot of logs across. Yep. I cut my way through a bunch, but then I got tired. I can ask. Yeah, what the hell with that. Yeah. You guys catching them? A couple acres. Uh, white fish. Three nice white fish in that hole right there. 16 feet of water. Four. I don't know. Uh, caught a dink laker, two dink lakers, and a dink white fish in the shack. Jigging? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Were these keep? Everybody. 
What's that? That was Cameron caught a Laker and Brandon caught a Laker. Yeah. Burbit. Any size? Uh, Brandon had one decent one, I guess. Yeah. Were these white fish keepers? Yeah, I think they'd be keep. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that'd be some fun jigging right there. Cool. You heading back to the shack? I got to put new bait on that one over there, and then I'll be back to the shack. Cool. I'll see you over there. No brookies? Not a brookie. Huh. Mountain trout. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Find any snow? Oh, yeah. It looks it. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's some snow. Where at? <laughs> Tis on Cook. Is that what you went? How long did it take you? No. Went down by Max's down that way, Rip Dam down that way? No, I didn't get that far down the lake. I couldn't tell if I was on slush or breaking through, so I only went like a mile. Nice. Turned around. Went to a bunch of my trapping spots. 110 miles. That's it? Yep. Right. I thought that was pretty good. That's just a hobby. Yep. It was fun though. I mean, the freaking ride just couldn't be any better. There ain't been nobody on the logging roads, have No. Been. You break trail a lot of the way? Yeah. I had to cut a lot of trees. Really? Yeah, I got tired. I, know I, oh, I couldn't get to one spot I wanted to go because I, I cut like four trees with the axe like that big. Went like a half mile and there's like ten trees that size. I was like... You got it. I get there, but not that way. But it was fun. Never saw another person saw an otter and a rabbit. Rabbit, yeah. Yeah. Well, Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Well, you I, have the rabbit. We can have rabbit tonight. I probably could have run it over, but I stopped because I was thinking there might be a fisher behind it. But nothing came. I didn't wait too long. <laughs> You were just waiting for the camera to do something special, aren't you? Yeah, I don't know about that. You're I can't remember candid what. Candid camera. Yeah, What do you think, Brandon? Huh? Uh, I think I'm <clears throat> Pretty good shape if you want cuss nuggets. 100%. I want 100 percent You taking this all the way up or just to your leader? Yeah, I'm taking it all the way up. Go for a ride? Yeah. Oh, oh. Sorry? Cost nine. That's what I said. Stop on. Pretty sure. Look. Yep. Yeah. Pick it up. Oh. That's four for four. Oh. I only eat them a couple times. Our friend cooked them over here, but they were good. Beautiful. Thanks, bud. Thanks for the nuggets. That's nuggets. There he is. Some, ain't much, but that'll feed a person. Want it? Oh, yeah.
my little change of plans. I came down Millinocket way to get resupplied, fuel up, get some things that we needed, make sure Pat was going to pick up my buddy at the airport tomorrow morning. And it looked like Pat is in a bind, threw out his back, and the furnace went that, that he's in charge of at the place where he works. So he was still going to pick up, drive all the way from Bahaba to Bangor to pick him up and then drop him off another three hours later up in the woods and then drive home. And that's just a great friend right there, man. They don't come every day like that. But I said, no, I'm not going to let you do that. So while I'm out of the woods, I'm going to head Bangor away and either sleep in the truck or do something and I'll pick up in the morning and we'll start our trip. Like I said, he was supposed to fly in last night, but his flight got canceled due to the freezing rain and bad weather. So I think he's going to extend his trip an extra day on the back end. So we should be able to get four days on the water.